The P-E ratio clearly has a number of drawbacks and conceptually what it tries to do is take the price of a stock and divide it by the earnings per, for, for each stock or per share. Um, and so if we took it to the company level, um, it also conceptually takes the market capitalization of the company and divides it by the overall earnings of the company. Um, and uh, this is at the company level or it could be done at the stock level and both the, the, the market cap and the overall net income of the company would be divided by the number of shares. They would both be divided by the same number at the top and the bottom. So you, we would end up with the same ratio whether we worked at the market cap level for the company or the price level for the stock. <clears throat> but both with, the, with both the P and the E, there are certain issues. The price doesn't capture, for example, whether the company has any debt or not. And as we've seen uh, in many other instances, the earnings don't capture the overall operations of the company in that the earnings are affected by depreciation, they're affected by uh, one-off events, they also are affected by the interest rate or the interest payment that the company has to make which is linked to the interest rate um, and so therefore it's affected by the capital structure of a company so a company that has a lot of debt and has to make high interest payments um, for a given time has, will have that, that will impact earnings. Um, and that may or may not be important to the operations of the company over the long term or in assessing its value. Um, and also it's affected by the tax, taxes that the company pays. So when we are com comparing companies between different countries or where there may be tax changes in the future, um, the earnings will, will be affected by that. So in order to address the issues um, of, the, of the P and the E, um, another ratio that has been developed and that is used is the enterprise value to EBITDA ratio. Um, and it again works off of one year of, of adjusted earnings in this case um, and so it doesn't capture the full development of the company over time but it seeks to address some of the shortcomings of the P-E ratio or at least provide another way of looking at, at the valuation of a particular company. The enterprise value, um, which is the numerator in, in the, uh, this particular um, ratio, um, is defined as the market capitalization of the company plus the net debt. Um, and it's effectively um, the market capitalization of the company plus the debt, plus any minority interest, plus preference shares, less the cash. And it, it corresponds to the amount that, a public, that an acquirer would have to pay for a public company. So it, it goes beyond market capitalization and captures um, the net debt of the company, i.e. the debt, less any cash or cash equivalents. And uh, the bigger adjustments, even more significant adjustments, potentially occur at, uh, where in the other instance we used earnings and divided by earnings. Here we're adjusting by EBITDA, which, is, which stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So effectively, we're taking the earnings before the impacts of interest rate uh, and interest policy and uh, leverage and the cost of, the, of that debt before taxes and tax policy and, and potential tax changes and before depreciation and amortization. So effectively, it, it looks at the company more than just the uh, actual market capitalization of the equity. So it takes into account the debt of the company. So it takes into account the overall value of that entity beyond its um, equity value because an acquirer would have to assume the debt. Um, and, on the, uh, and, on the, uh, and it's divided by a number that, it, that takes um, that takes earnings before the impact of interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, all of which uh, will vary between companies but really aren't that linked uh, to, to the operations of the company um, and more decisions that are taken uh, that relate to interest rate policy or tax uh, regimes or de depreciation policy. Um, and uh, it, 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 uh, it often the EBITDA ratio is also considered to be more aligned with the operating cash flows of the company, although the operating cash flows would, would have further adjustments most likely. Um, and so we, instead of taking the price to earnings ratio, many analysts take the EV to EBITDA ratio, which looks at the overall company market cap plus net debt and divides it by earnings uh, before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization to get a picture of the company's value.